person. We don't believe that. Each and every one of you make us bigger and stronger and more powerful. The Pope in his February 2015 release called upon the people to know that the church failed you because it forgot to tell you God created the earth so keep it sacred. We forgot to tell you to keep it sacred, said the church. We've been working with churches since 87 where they signed an apology. They said, we're sorry for what we did to the Native Americans in the oppression of their spirituality. Either we help attack you or we passively allowed it to happen. And so they apologized every 10 years since. We were at the cathedral, St. Mark's Cathedral in Seattle. And the National Episcopalian Church issued a statement on behalf and for the Standing Rock Sioux, who, like you, are standing up. How would you feel if they came down and arrested 30 of you right here for being here? Asking you, what do you think you're doing? Talking out. What do you think you're doing? Petitioning your government for your grievances. What do you think you're doing? Praying as if it matters. <laughs> These are constitutional rights guaranteed to each and every person, citizen in this country. And yet North Dakota doesn't believe so. That governor will take away sanitary services, water and food, trying to force a riot, trying to make them look like they're terrible people. We ask the churches, help, support, bring us your belief, turn it into action, not promises. We don't want apologies, we want action. We want you to encourage your people to stand up and not be afraid. If you really believe this is God's creation, then believe enough in yourself and in your people to stand together. Because if you stay united, you'll win in the end. We watched elders being arrested down in Anacortes for putting their sleeping bags and tents on the railroad, bringing in Balkan oil, thrown into jail. But they, at least they knew what they're doing. Raging grannies, they call themselves. <laughs> they're willing to be arrested to go to jail. We're up in Vancouver, and Reuben George's mom, an elder, she told us about what's going on up there at the tar sands and the suffering of the people up there with the cancer and the murder. It looks like somebody nuclear bombed that part of the earth. It's a national sacrifice zone of Canada. We know the experience because it happens here. That's what happened in the 70s when they declared Navajo and Hopi national sacrifice zones. We accept that apparently. They did it then and they can do it again. All those corporations of the Trilateral Commission who formed into an organized society before World War I, II ended. They planned this then. It's a long-term agenda. And we didn't have the right to speak out in their plans. They've been doing it for 70 years, implementing a long-term agenda. But now we're awakening these journeys. That's what it's about, calling us all together, all of us working together for the common good, the common cause. 45 trains going through here. My colleague, Kurt, he says, don't forget, yes, we won something at Cherry Point, but it's a battle, it's not the war. 
Yes, five of the coal parts are gone. But those are battles. Those aren't wars. That's not the war itself. The war is to save the earth, to stop global warming. For all of us to take action where we can, when we can, with each other. You have the power of voice and you have the power of vote. If you don't use your voice, you're voiceless. If you don't use your vote, you're powerless. By not using your vote, you empower them by allowing those that favor corporate dreams to take over and set the agenda. So we're asking all of us to be aware that we do count, we do matter. That's the message of these journeys. We can only do it together as equals. We have to overcome historical trauma. We have to overcome historical hatred. We live in a world where herbicides, pesticides, fungicides, mold inhibitors, states and answers, color and answers, and preservatives are an everyday fact. Where the waters are poisoned, the rivers are dying, the Yankton Sioux said, don't forget, our river's dying. The Columbia River tribes said the Columbia River's dying, the Fraser River tribe, Fraser River's dying, the Athabasca River's dying. Our river has very little water in it anymore. It's dying. What's left is polluted. So all these corporate dreams of Balkan oil, and tar sands oil, and the coal is at our expense. So we want to thank you for being here. This totem pole has an eagle on top, representing the leadership that can say things in a big way and how they interrelate. We got a 12-foot wing that'll go on it, prayer flute and love flute player. We got the moon on the chest of the eagle, grandmother moon. If you look at the moon when it comes over this mountain between 9 and 11, when it's full, look at the dark spots, you'll see the outline of a Native American legs crossed, hands on lap, head wow. bowed, two feathers over his forehead, praying, praying within the circle of the full moon. Then we have a blue face representing Father Sky manifested as a human being. On this side we have a sitting bear. If you want to support Standing Rock, go to Sitting Bear at standingrock.org or .com. I think it's .org. .com. <laughs> then on the other side is a wolf. In between is a spear. Neither one are touching it because we're at peace. Four white buffalo at the request of Yankton Elder, Phil Lane, <coughs> line of chiefs, great philosopher, protector of the earth. Always out there on the front line. He said, make sure you use pink on the lips, and the eyelids, and the ears, and the horn. Like an albino, a real albino. He goes, well, those red eyes, those albino buffalo are right smack in the middle of the herd. Protected by all others. We tried to paint that those four buffaloes with grays and some blacks, and he kept calling us just as we changed the paint. And the fourth time we changed it back again and he called us right at that moment. Our paint was still dripping on our brush. And he goes, now I'm telling you, add that paint. <laughs> so kind of looked around to see if he had a camera. <laughs> then below that you see a, a child, an adult in the, inside the robe of the buffalo. Reflecting how the people of the plateau and the plains depended upon the buffalo. 60 million buffalo in that herd at one time. Wiped out in 20 years. Only 600 were left in private ownership. Those are the seeds of the new population. Then you have on the other side a young warrior kneeling two feathers with the peyote buttons, ready to follow the peyote trail. The Native American church, they call it. But the peyote religion is over 10,000 years old. 
and it's been expanding into North America ever since. Myself, my brother, and I have practiced that way and found great healing. My wife is right now meeting with a peyote roadman, getting more prayers for us. We stopped to see a peyote roadman on the way here to get his blessings. And in between, you have the peyote symbols of the teepee, the fan, the drum, the staff, the rattle, the water bird. And on this side, the pipe carrier. The people at Standing Rock are being accused of having pipe bombs. It's the pipe they carried in to pray with. Don't believe. Don't buy into the propaganda. We need them supported. We can't back down. If we back down on lending our support to them, they won't be there for you when you need it the most. We have to stand up together and remain strong. That's what the campaign's about. Because we're fighting billionaires with peanuts. United States Supreme Court issued the opinion, United Citizens, and they told, said to the corporations, it's not your fault you have so much money, so go ahead and give it to the politicians. Make all your donations. Give all you want. That's the opinion of the Supreme Court. They're saying go ahead and buy your way to the future. We find that unacceptable. Someday there are citizens that are organizing, believing that someday you will help them stop that and overturn that opinion. We loved you, we let you go to 
other side. That's for our ancestors. God, my sisters, a greener. You know, I was down in Africa, and we're working with some medicine people down there, and they told us that in that way, because I'm a dreamer and she's a dreamer, that makes us brother and sister, that she's a true sister. So I'm glad we're able to stand here with her and uh, sing for all of our ancestors. All of our ancestors. And I hope.